Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Uh, I would like to remind you that um, Jason Lowenthal of Massachusetts uh, attempting to get on the ballot in Massachusetts 7, that's Cambridge, Harvard Yard, and such places, his case is still under consideration by the judge, and we hope to have Jason back next week when we can give you some news, and we'll have some other candidate news later in the program. What's going on, though, with this ISIS and so forth, this is a, a, it's a game of double, triple, quadruple levels of deception. Uh, for example, uh, we are told that uh, the bombing has been carried out in this past week by such countries as Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Qatar, uh, by Bahrain, not, but of course Qatar not doing the bombing, but only uh, some kind of uh, backup. Uh, well, you can see the problem with this is Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain have funded ISIS, and now they're bombing ISIS. The CIA has trained them. The French have trained them. Now the French and U.S. Air Forces, navies are bombing ISIS. So this is a real Byzantine mess. Therefore, the only thing to do is to keep it simple. Take political aim at the people who are pressing for war. And the most obvious is obviously McCain. So I renew my call. Arrest McCain for ISIS. Hashtag arrest McCain for ISIS. This was brought to the climate march in New York City last Sunday. It was on the UNAC conference call yesterday evening. There's pressure all over the place. Formulate a demand and make it the leader of the war party, the most prominent, the most telegenic, the most broadcast uh, of all the leaders of the warmonger party. It's McCain. So therefore, it's clear why people are adding their voices to arrest McCain for ISIS with a hashtag in front on Twitter. Inundate. Uh, we've got about five weeks to the election, five weeks from Tuesday, and the election will be upon us. Uh, so in the meantime, we want to try to do something about this. And uh, remember that my uh, approach here subsumes a strategy for the domestic elections. According to the New York Times, the Republicans have 56 percent chance to take the Senate. According to Nate Silver of the 538 the Republicans have a 54.8 chance of taking the Senate. Not if the leader of their party, the most prominent and televised Republican senator, is exposed for what he is, somebody who fraternizes, pals around, as Palin used to say, with terrorists, with the caliph. Those pictures, this is not a conspiracy theory. It's a picture, and it shows McCain sitting there with this guy, Badri also known as Baghdadi, the head of ISIS, also known as Caliph Ibrahim, the terrorist emperor of the world, uh, the head of the caliphate, the head of the so-called Islamic State, or Daesh, as we can also call it. Right? This is one thing coming from the French Hollande that probably makes some sense. So the war party, who is it? It's McCain. It's Lindsey Graham, the guy who says that if Obama doesn't get it right, ISIS will be here soon and kill us all. Secretary of State Kerry is a member of the war party. He is a skull and bones alumnus of Yale. Samantha Power leads the humanitarian bomber faction, right? The soft power that has now been weaponized. General Allen called in by Kerry uh, must be assigned to the warmonger party. He was going to go on to become the NATO commander. He was shot down in the same scandal which uh, engulfed Petraeus in November of 2012. And then we, according to the uh, Wall Street Journal, as we reported at the time, Wall Street Journal this past April reported that since Kerry and Samantha were not getting what they wanted in terms of training of Syrian terrorists – they wanted to bring in General Petraeus from retirement and General Keene. And, of course, General, these two names, with Petraeus, we get all the neocons. 
and with Keene also, and we get in particular the Institute for the Study of War with Kim Kagan. We get Frederick Kagan at the American Enterprise Institute. We get Robert Kagan, who was on CBS Face the Nation last week, um, and the neocons once again in general. So that's your war party. But it is not practical to explain this. Imagine explaining this to Joe Sixpack. Therefore, the essential truth must be boiled down, distilled, sloganized, so it can be understood by the last cook. And that's the idea. Arrest McCain for ISIS. I appeal to you. If you're a peace activist, if you're a person of goodwill, this is essentially the cause that makes sense. It is not politic, in my view, to come out and agitate, oh, the bombing of Iraq, oh, the bombing of Syria. We've got peace activists who are more concerned about the bombing of Syria than the Syrian government is. The Syrian government does not take that position. You look at the foreign minister, Moalem. You look at the deputy foreign minister, Mekdad. You look at the UN representative, Jafari, all great Syrians, and they don't get bent out of shape over this. They simply say, we welcome international help. We want it to be coordinated, to be sure. Um, apparently, the Syrian government considers that the letter that was given by Samantha Power to Jafari at the United Nations several hours before the bombing started on Tuesday, that that fulfilled the essential requirements of coordination because it said we're going to bomb these areas in general and it's going to be ISIS as the target. So the Syrian government's not complaining. Why should U.S. peace activists complain when the Syrian government comes forward and says they're not really bombing Syria, they're bombing ISIS, and we welcome that. It is one of these contradictions. But to keep your political momentum in such a morass and briar patch of contradictions, the only way to do it is arrest McCain for ISIS. So I recommend that. Now, the Russian position uh, is to criticize all this. Fine, that's what they do in public. Uh, Russia obviously wants to be consulted. They should be. And Russia wanted the U.S. to ease up on Ukraine, back off on Ukraine. And they're right on that, too. Uh, Iran obviously criticizes it. These are countries that feel threatened by the U.S. In addition, uh, Iran criticizes it. Uh, and, and they're also right. But um, the, the what they're really saying is that they wanted to extract concessions from the U.S. to make this legal through the Security Council and the U.S. has proven unwilling. Well, the U.S. should give these countries the concessions they want, but at the same time, the existential threat is not to Russia, not to Iran, it's to Syria. So the bombing, and to Iraq too, but in, in terms of a functioning government, Syria is the one. So when Syria says, we welcome this support, I think that's that essentially says it. The one area where you want to get in there is that there should be no support, no training, no backup for Syrian rebels. Not now, not ever. And here again, for the peace activists, get rid of this idea that Assad is the villain of the peace. He is not. It is a stable government, a neo nasserist government, which can indeed provide public order and a framework for the continuation of civilization. And now we have to switch our attention to Erdogan of Turkey. This the duplicity of Erdogan Davutoglu has now reached new uh, depths. As Senator Markey said, what they're doing is unconscionable and outrageous. And we'll be back in just a second with uh, the story, the lowdown on Turkey. 